Hi guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and welcome to part 19 of the Spectrum AR636 programming series. In this part we'll be discussing how to perform field adjustments on your AR636 using the AS3X programming application on your mobile device. In order for us to make adjustments at the field, first we'll need to connect our mobile application using Bluetooth. I've already connected to the Bluetooth uh, programming module and we are connected to our AR636 receiver and now we can roll through all of the different adjustments that can be made using the AS3X programming application. Right now we are looking at the dashboard. There are several different ways to adjust the gains and this will be the first one where we can go through and adjust the gains for each flight mode. From the dashboard it's a little easier to see the gains for each flight mode individually rather than looking at one axis and having all three flight modes represented we can look at the flight modes and see the three axes per flight mode. So right now we're looking at flight mode one which as we recall in some of the previous uh, videos of the series our spectrum um, or our AS3X gains are all off because we don't want the gyro to uh, be enabled in flight mode one. For flight mode two, we have our gains as 40%, 40%, and 50% for our roll, pitch, and yaw, or aileron, elevator, and rudder, respectively. One of the things to recognize when your gains are set too high is for roll, your, uh, if the gains are set too high, your aircraft will start to oscillate from side to side in the air, which means that the corrections are a little too, uh, it's correcting too much for the amount of wind or, uh, you know, the amount of movement that's going on in the air. If you notice your airplane starting to oscillate from side to side, you want to adjust the gains down a little bit. So right now we're sitting at 40% gain for the roll, if we wanted to adjust that, we can simply go in here, tap on 40% in the dashboard, and say we want to turn that down to 35%. We can go ahead and tap where it says 40, type 35, and then we would tap anywhere in the, uh, the black grid below. So right where it says 40, we can tap there, and you'll see that the value changed from 40 to 35. The other way that you can do that is you can tap it and just hit the plus or minus arrows and that will also work. For pitch corrections what you would see is the airplane starting to porpoise or it would uh, it would go up and down. It would look like a, a dolphin jumping through the water. Um, so if you're porpoising up and down it means that your elevator uh, gain is too high. And again, the same as uh, adjusting the roll, um, <clears throat> adjusting the roll gain, we would do the same thing to adjust the elevator gain. So you can tap there and adjust it down, say, to 35, and everything is good to go. For yaw, it's the same thing. If the uh, yaw, if the rudder is moving, the airplane will uh, will oscillate from side to side, uh, and the rudder, you know, it will yaw back and forth. If the gain is too high on the rudder, so we can go there and we can adjust the rudder gain as well uh, using the plus and minus arrows. And we'll just leave that at fifty percent. Now the other way to adjust these is to go into our AS3X settings down at the bottom. That's how we adjust things using the dashboard. You just tap in there, type in the new value, and, uh, and tap in again. So again, we can go 35, uh, you know, we can tap on our aileron gain. If we wanted to adjust that to say 45, we can just type in 45, tap again anywhere inside the black grid that you can see and you'll see that uh, that we're looking at 45% again. The other way to adjust your settings is to go into your AS3X settings down at the bottom, and we can go into gain and priority, 
And here we have a graphical representation of what our gain and our priority look like uh, within the, the AS3X settings for each individual axis. So when we're looking at our roll axis, our pitch, or our yaw, we'll see all three flight modes for that one axis. All right, so in this particular case, I can see my roll for flight mode one. This is my aileron axis. Uh, flight mode one is set to zero. Flight mode two is set to 45. And flight mode three is set to 40. Since I want flight mode three and flight mode two to match because the gains are gonna be the same, uh, whether I'm just in standard gyro mode or I'm in safe mode, let's go ahead and adjust flight mode 3 to 45. Now I can either tap inside the grid or I can tap in the graph. So if I tap the graph, you'll see it goes to this area where I can adjust it, and we'll go back. And if I tap in the grid, we see the same thing. Now, in order to adjust the flight mode gains, we will simply put our finger and drag either up or down, which will adjust the gains as we drag our fingers around. Now we want this to be 45, so we'll go ahead and set it to 45 and then hit the back button. We should now see on our grid that our gains for flight mode two and flight mode three are set to 45. If you wanted to change your stick priority, you would swipe from side to side. So I'd place my finger anywhere in the grid and swipe from side to side. So as I go to the right, the priority decreases. As I go to the left, the priority increases. So here we're at 190% stick priority, and I want that to be 170. So that's how we adjust our gains and our priority, our stick priorities, or each one of the axes that we're looking at. And again, we've got our roll, uh, which is our aileron. So you see flight mode one, flight mode two, flight mode three for aileron. We've got our pitch, which is our elevator. So we've got flight mode two and flight mode three. Again, flight mode two and flight mode three do not match. So I wanna match those up. So let's go into flight mode three and adjust our gain down to 35%. There we go, and we'll hit the back button. And we'll go to our yaw, and everything looks good there. Now something to keep in mind is that when you're adjusting your settings with the AR636 and the AS3X uh, programming application, your settings do not take effect until we back out to the main page. Once we back out to the main page, your settings will take effect and everything is good to go. Now, one of the other things that you may want to adjust at the field is the orientation of your receiver. If for whatever reason your, uh, your corrections when you do your, your bench tests when you get to the field, if for whatever reason your uh, AS3X corrections are not working in the correct ways that you expect them to, you can look in receiver orientation. And here we can make adjustments with the pins either facing forward or facing aft on the airframe and that is by swiping up and down inside the application and we can also swipe from side to side to change the orientation of the receiver if we had it mounted on its side or with the label up or label down so that's one of the other parameters that we can change within the AS3X programming application if we need to change the receiver orientation. And then we can go back. We could change where the flight mode switch is programmed. Uh, right now it's programmed to AUX2, which is where we want it. We could change our surface setup. Um, so if we needed to, say, reverse our ailerons, which we always want to do in the receiver and not the transmitter. So if your ailerons are reversed, you would go to surface setup, tap your ailerons, and here is where we would reverse the ailerons. All right, we don't want to mess with subtrim, but we may want to also adjust the travel. So if the ailerons are traveling too much, we want to adjust that here. So we would go into travel and we can just adjust our aileron travel right here. 
Now you can see right now, we can adjust that to say 60% and I'm just swiping up and down uh, on the screen and that's what's adjusting my, uh, my trims. Now say we want the left one to be different than the right. We can unlock these by tapping just the left button and that would allow me to change the, uh, the left aileron independently of the right. But if we wanna lock those together while well, they will adjust at the same time, we just tap the right button and you'll see both the left and right are now highlighted. If I tap the right button, the left will not be highlighted anymore. It'll be grayed out. So that's how we can, uh, you know, lock those together. We'll uh, both adjust at the same time. So we'll leave those at 100%. All right. So that's how we reverse and adjust the travel of our control surfaces. Um, the only other thing that we may want to change within here may be the port assignments. So if for whatever reason you have to, uh, you know, you have a channel go bad or something like that, or you want to reassign one of your channels, you know, say you have your, your ailerons and your, your rudder reversed for whatever reason, uh, you know, you could change your ailerons to use port four and change your rudder to use port two. And that would, um, uh, you know, change the ports that they're assigned to without having to physically unplug anything. But, you know, we normally have our ailerons uh, in port two, our elevator in port three, and our rudder in port four. Regardless of uh, where you have things set up, we want to make sure that whatever this says, you know, so this says ailerons on port two, elevator on three, rudder on four, we want to make sure that we actually have everything plugged in in accordance with our port assignments in the AS3X programming application. If you don't, then your, uh, your receiver will not know where uh, your control surfaces are plugged in and your AS3X corrections could be very off. So we'll go back out to the main page here and that pretty much is all of the things that we would want to adjust. Again, I recommend changing your expo and your dual rates inside your transmitter and making sure that your travel and your server reversing is done inside the receiver. And that only applies to the servos that are directly controlled by AS3X. So that's your ailerons, your elevator, and your rudder. For your flaps, for your throttle, and for your gear doors, if you need to reverse those, those can be done safely in the transmitter. It's just your main three axes that are controlled by AS3X, so your aileron, elevator, and rudder, that must be adjusted or reversed inside the receiver, so the receiver knows how much travel it has and whether or not uh, your flight controls are moving in the right direction. And that is all there is to it. That concludes part 19 of the Spectrum AR636 programming series, where we've just learned how to perform field adjustments of the AR636 receiver using the AS3X programming application for iOS and Android. Make sure to stay tuned for part 20, where we'll be discussing how to perform in-flight gain adjustments using telemetry-compatible spectrum transmitters.